Pointers are a very powerful, useful, dangerous, and common data type in C++. To really understand pointers, you need to first understand how a variable works. A variable is a typed and named location in memory. In this variable definition, memory is allocated for a value the size of an integer and associated with the name x. Here, the integer value 1 is copied into the memory location associated with the integer variable x. This is both a definition and an assignment. Memory is allocated in the size of int, and the value from the variable named x is copied into the variable named y. The variable y now contains a separate integer in a separate memory location with the same value as the variable x. So we can see that the name of a variable is used as an index to map to a memory address and a particular associated data type. C++ also provides the ability to create a variable that is a pointer to a value as opposed to carrying the value itself. This is a pointer definition. The variable named IP is of the type pointer to int. Here memory is allocated in the size of a pointer. The pointer is also strongly typed, that is the compiler retains an association with this pointer that it points to a value of type int. This is typically referred to as an integer pointer. Here the address of the variable integer named x is placed in the pointer variable named ip. The ampersand is formally called the reference operator, but in this context it's more commonly called the address of operator. It returns the address of an object suitable for assigning to a pointer. So this statement assigns the address of x to the integer pointer ip. The integer pointer ip now points to the integer variable x. The ampersand is also used in C++ for a special reference type that will be covered later. This copies the value pointed to by IP, which currently points to the integer variable X, to the integer variable Y. In this context, the asterisk is called the pointer dereference operator. It's used to get at the value pointed to by the pointer. You can, of course, also change IP to point at a different variable. Let's take a look at a simple example. Here in Xcode, I've opened a working copy of working.cpp. Let's start by defining some variables. So there we have an integer called x, and we've initialized it with a value of 7. And we have an integer variable named y, and we've given it a value of 42. And this is an integer pointer, and we're giving it the address of the variable x. So we'll put in some printf so we can see what's going on. This first one will give us the value of x, and I'm just going to copy and paste this and change the copies. This first one has an x there, and then this one has a y here, and then this will be the value that's pointed at by ip, like that. So now when I save this and run it, you see the value of x is 7, as we expected, the value of y is 42, and the value that is pointed to by IP is 7, because IP up here on line 9 is given the address of the variable X, and the variable X has a 7 in it. So I'm going to make another copy of all three of these printfs, and before that, I'm going to change the value of X to 73. And now when I run this, you see in the second batch, x is 73, and the value of what's pointed at by ip is 73. So you can see by changing the value of x, we're also able to dereference that with ip, and we get that new value of x. And let's do one more of these. And now I'm changing the integer pointer to the address of y. And so when I run this, in our third set now, x is still 73 and y is 42, but the value that's pointed at by ip is now 42, which is the value of y. So I'm going to leave this working file open for the next lesson because we're going to build on this knowledge to understand references. In this lesson, I've shown you the fundamentals of pointers. Understanding pointers is critical to using C++ effectively, so take some time to experiment with this on your own. Understanding this will serve you well for the long term. It's also essential for understanding references, which we'll be discussing in the next lesson. And you'll see many more examples of pointers and references in the rest of this course.